Today we are reviewing the REI Magma Trail Quilt. And for those of you who are not familiar with quilts, they're basically a sleeping bag that doesn't have a hood and has an open bottom. And so the idea with the open bottom, there's several advantages to that. And the main advantage is that you can control through a cord system, which I'll show a little bit later, you can control how closed up the quilt is on your sleeping pad. So you can have it uh, very closed up like this for cold nights, or you can adjust it so that it's like that for warm nights. And then ditching the pad attachment cord system altogether, you can lay it over you like a blanket. And a lot of people find this kind of design far more comfortable because you have more mobility inside the quilt and you don't feel like you're in a coffin like you feel in some really narrow mummy bags. Okay, let's talk about the REI Magma Trail Quilt 30. This is a down-filled quilt. The down is 850 fill power, water resistant down. In a size regular, there's 10 and a half ounces of fill and combined with a Pertex 15 denier shell and lining that brings the total weight of the quilt up to about 19 ounces. This gives it approximately a 30 degree rating according to the manufacturer. We'll talk about how accurate that is in a little bit. One of the things that differentiate the REI Magma quilt from some other ultralight quilts that you might find are its dimensions. It has a generous foot box and a generous girth. I'll put the exact specs down below and I'll also provide a link to the review article which contains even more detail than this video. Some of the features of the REI Magma quilt include a trapezoidal foot box. This allows you to splay your feet this way in a relaxed position. So the foot box is wider at the top than at the bottom and provides plenty of room for those of you who might have big feet. You can see the shape of the foot box here. This is the top and you can see that the width of the top, at least on the outside, is, is probably 15 inches somewhere in there and the width of the bottom is more like 12. So you can see the trapezoidal uh, shape right there and figure that you know your feet are gonna be positioned kind of like that in the foot box. One little hang loop that can be used to hang the sleeping bag out to dry on those cold wet mornings when you have some sunshine. Another interesting feature of this quilt is that it uses a hybrid construction of both horizontal and vertical baffles. Horizontal at the foot end of the bag and vertical near the head end. Now let me tell you why this is an interesting design decision. The main disadvantage to horizontal baffles is that down tends to shift side to side in them and often when they lay over you the down falls off to the sides and leaves cold spots in the middle of the baffle. At least that's the theory. There are ways around this as a as a manufacturer by making sure that you stuff enough down in your baffles so that it does not shift. Now some people believe, wow you're noisy. Now some, now some people believe that horizontal baffles are a design feature because then you can control the amount of down that sits over you and sort of adjust the temperature rating of your bag. Don't buy it. Not in an ultralight bag. Maybe in a winter bag you want some of the down shoved to the side on very warm nights, but for most summer and three season bags, no. Get a bag that's properly filled and resist the shifting of down. So because horizontal baffles at the foot end of the bag are shorter, uh, there's less chance of, a d of down shifting throughout the baffles. So having horizontal baffles down at the foot end of the sleeping bag is no big deal. But replacing the horizontal baffles with vertical baffles at the head end, that's a pretty smart design decision. And you'll see REI do this with their Magma Quilt. You'll see Enlightened Equipment do this with their U-shaped baffles. So basically they've got vertical baffles at the top, semi-horizontal baffles at the bottom. But the idea is that it, it stabilizes the down and keeps it in place, which gives you a, a warmer sleeping experience. Okay, let's take a look at the pad attachment system that's used to couple the Magma quilt to a sleeping pad. Now all, maybe not all, but most quilts have some type of pad attachment system. Usually it's flat straps or cordage of some type 
and those straps form loops that go around the sleeping pad and then somehow the sleeping bag attaches to those loops. These systems are important for two reasons. First, this is what allows the edge of the quilt to remain close to the pad so that you don't get drafts coming in when you roll around at night. Second, it allows you to adjust the girth of the quilt from narrow in cold conditions to wider in warmer conditions or for those people who want more leg room or who sleep on their side. So today I'm using the Nemo Astro Light long insulated pad. It's 25 inches wide, 76 inches long. For those of you who are looking for like the top of the line comfort pad for backpacking and you're willing to carry a little bit extra weight, nothing beats this. This thing is incredible. Sorry for that distraction. So what REI has done is supply two loops with the magma. And these loops are made out of kind of a shoestring style cord. And they are affixed with a draw cord toggle. That's what controls the size of the loop that goes around the pad so that you can use this on a 25 inch wide pad or a 20 inch wide pad or pads of varying thicknesses. So this draw cord toggle is what allows you to adjust the size of the loop. Now for me, uh, during my use of this sleeping bag system, I found that at night this draw cord does not hold very well. So what I like to do before I do anything else is uh, first, make sure that loop fits nice and tight around my sleeping pad. You, you want this to be tight, especially during the night, you want it to stay tight so that you can move these toggles back and forth, and I'll get to those in a second. So adjust the, the toggle down so the loop is tight, and then tie an overhand knot right on top of that toggle. And then if you want more security, because you're not going to adjust this in the future, you can tie another reverse overhand knot so that you have a square knot. That locks that toggle in now so that it stays tight around the pad. Second thing you'll notice is that each of these loops is supplied with two plastic toggles. These toggles mate to straps on the magma quilt. So let's see how that works. Okay, so on the underside of the magma quilt, there are small loops sewn into the edge of the quilt. These loops are what goes around the toggles. So we can flip this over and roll the quilt back to expose the lowermost loop. And you'll see that there are two sets of loops about 16 inches apart. So we're going to affix the, the lower ones first. And so basically what we're doing is threading this toggle through the loop of the quilt. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now you can kind of see how this works. The way we adjust the girth of the quilt is simply by sliding the toggles back and forth. And we can do this uh, while we're in the sleeping bag. So we can slide it out wide if we want more leg room and tossing and turning room or it's a warmer night. Or we can slide the toggles close together which makes the quilt behave more like a sleeping bag. And you can see that when everything's tucked in, those toggles uh, basically function to keep the side of the quilt mated to the side of the pad so that you don't get drafts coming in and cooling you down at night. Okay, so we've got another set of straps up higher here. So we're going to adjust our toggle make that loop nice and tight, tie our square knot to lock it in. And another advantage of locking in this loop so it's nice and tight is that it can stay affixed to your sleeping pad when you uh, deflate it and pack it up for the day. So my straps, they, I just keep them on the pad the whole time. Okay, so we will slide the upper loop over the upper toggle and do, do that for both sides. Now when I go to bed, I like my lower toggle kind of tucked in because I like my lower body to be draft free and warm, but I'm a side sleeper, so I like lots of girth and room in the upper body. So I'll bring the two lower toggles together nice and close so that the lower end of my quilt is more like a mummy bag. And then I'll spread my upper toggles nice and wide so that I have lots of room to move around and, and be comfortable side sleeping in my quilt. Now on really cold nights, I can just reach down and slide these upper toggles closer together 
if I want to be warmer. So the REI Magma has an insulated draft collar. Uh, as you can see here, it's about oh, two and a half inches wide and is filled pretty good with down. My personal preference after having experienced this one is to have a bigger one. It just feels so good when you have that uh, wrapped around you and it just doesn't feel like you have a cord around your neck. You've got a, a tube of down which which is really nice. goes a long way at adding comfort. Okay let's talk about performance a bit. Um, I've had the magma out in some fairly hostile conditions. I took it with me on my snowy range storm trip where um, I slept in a in a kind of a tarp tent shelter and experienced winds above the tree line of you know 60 miles an hour and got a lot of spin drift in that tent, spin drift that covered the, the magma quilt. So from a, from a perspective of exposing the quilt to moisture, that was my most intense test. So after that night, I stuffed it in its stuff sack and then took it out uh, the next morning. And it was definitely damp, but um, I, I'd be okay sleeping in it again another night. And I think that is a testament to the water resistant down more than anything else because it does have the ability to resist some moisture intrusion. Now I'm going to say some. It's not a cure-all. You still need to keep your sleeping bag as dry as possible. And just because the down is wet doesn't mean you're going to sleep as warm as in a, in a bag with dry down. But overall, for a 19 ounce quilt, the REI Magma has outstanding loft. Um, you kind of saw a picture a few minutes ago of me laying in it. It's, it's pretty toasty warm and I've had it below 30 wearing a puffy layer top and long underwear and have been pretty comfortable with it. So everybody sleeps different. There's a lot that goes into sleeping warm at night. That's a subject for another day. Uh, but just keep in mind, I think that 30 degree rating is an accurate estimate for where you'd want to take this quilt to the low end. 35 to 40 degrees, I've been extremely comfortable, very warm in it, and have had no issues at all. Especially when you're sleeping in a tent like this, where you don't have wind blowing on you or spin drift coming in. If you're sleeping under an open tarp, then consider that 30 degree rating more of a survival rating, and that you'll probably be more comfortable at around 40 degrees without supplementary clothing. And that's assuming you're spending the night out on a windy night. Okay, in summary, let's talk about what I like about the quilt. I like that it has a hybrid vertical and horizontal baffle design. Horizontal baffles near the foot end where vertical baffling isn't needed. Vertical baffling up here where I know that I'm confident my down isn't going to shift around and my quilt's going to stay warm even when I'm rolling around throughout the night. The second thing I like is the balance of weight to warmth and I think you've got uh, a fairly durable 15 denier fabric for both the lining and shell. Now you can get lighter fabrics if you go to a custom cottage manufactured quilt and that's one thing you're not going to get with an REI product is customization. Uh, but it's not going to save you that much. So moving from a 15 denier to a 7 denier fabric may save you an ounce and a half or two ounces on the shell. Now you could optimize that obviously, spin that extra weight towards more down, make a warmer quilt for the same weight, but you're going to pay at least a hundred dollars and maybe more depending on what manufacturer you go with to do those customizations. So again what I like about the REI Magma is that I think they targeted the sweet spot of a 30 degree rated quilt. It's 19 ounces. The warmth to weight ratio is very, very good. I've already mentioned that I like the draft collar. I wish it was a little bit bigger, but um, even a small one like this goes a long way at increasing your comfort at night. Any 
quilt I order from a manufacturer in the future is going to have a draft collar on it. Whether it's a 40 degree quilt or a 20 degree quilt, uh, it just adds so much comfort. I love the pad attachment system on the Magma. I didn't think I was going to like it. When I first saw it, it looked kind of cheesy, but now that I've figured out how to use it and make sure those straps stay secure, I really, really like it. It's the easiest one I've used so far of all the quilt manufacturers I've tried and it adjusts well and stays in place. Now, if you're comparing the Magma quilt to other quilts on the market from say Catabatic Gear or Enlightened Equipment or Noon Attack or Z-Packs, um, all those manufacturers give you a few more options than REI. REI just has the Magma Trail Quilt 30 right now in three different sizes, lengths, but you don't get customization with respect to downfill or fabrics or anything like that. So what you get is a $300 product that really hits a sweet spot in terms of weight and performance, and the quality is exceptional. What you're really buying with the REI Magma Trail Quilt is a performance to value ratio. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the review. It's a solid product. I recommend it especially if you're on a budget, but you want to go towards a quilt-based sleep system. Thanks for watching.